name is Jessica Calderon, and I am the program coordinator here at the Reardon Programs. And I'm very pleased to meet a uh, former mayor of Reardon of Los Angeles and a professor here at UCLA Anderson. Mm -hmm. How are you, sir? I'm fine, but I'm more famous for being connected with the Reardon program, which is what, 25 years old now? Yes, we're on the brink of celebrating our 25 year anniversary. Um, and so today I'd actually like to have a conversation with you about the program. And uh, why don't we start off by asking what drove you to create the Reardon programs? There was a, a study called A Nation at Risk put out by the Carnegie Foundation in 1984 that said that any child that cannot read and write by the end of the second grade will be lost for life. And it started me thinking also, young people who don't have the tools to compete in life are going to be failures in life. They're going to be unhappy adults. They may be out of work. They may be in prison. And I thought, well, the Reardon program at UCLA does two things. One is the mentors, the graduate students who work with the inner city kids learn a lot how to do better in life and the children learn how to be successful in life. And when I look back and I see how many of the kids went to Harvard Business School, UCLA Business School, Stanford, I say these young people are going to be very, very successful in life. So um, here at the Reardon programs, we strive to create leaders for the future. And what do you consider to be one of the most necessary qualities or characteristic of a leader? Well, that's what I teach at UCLA is leadership. And I have five axioms. One is courage. I'll go back and talk about it. Two is giving or caring, caring about others. Three is empowering others to do things. Fourth is a relentless pursuit of goals. And fifth is a sense of humor. So courage, the courage to just make things happen, make decisions, even if you're not sure whether it's a right decision. As President Teddy Roosevelt said, the world doesn't belong to the brain critic. It belongs to the person who stumbles and falls, gets bloodied and gets up and keeps going. And giving or caring is saying, caring about others. Every person you meet, whether the president of a company or whether a janitor or whatever, you should care about. And by the way, part of caring is learning from them. You can learn from anybody. And empowering, which is something most <coughs> governmental officials don't know about, is to empower people below you to make decisions. As mayor, I taught them just make the decision and don't worry about me. You just decide what's in the best interest of the city. After the North earth earthquake, I told everybody in the city, just do it, just get out and do it. You know, it's much easier to get forgiveness than to get permission. So just do it. Don't worry about the rules and regulations. Just make your business, come back to health, make your houses and the freeways we work that way. And in no time, the city had risen from the, the ashes and was really the healthiest city in the United States during those years. And then, of course, relentless pursuit of goals talks for itself. You are willful. You set a goal and you're going to get there. Just don't think you're going to think about getting there. You're going to get there. And then I've just added in the last week or so a sense of humor. You have to be able to laugh at yourself, laugh at each other. But I'm proud of my students have picked it up and they are really going to go out in the world and be great leaders. So far, how have the Rudin programs, the trifecta of the scholars, the healthcare fellows, and the MBA fellows surpassed your expectations? Infinitely. I mean, I can't believe how well the program's done. And I, I'm embarrassed my name is on it because it, it's it done so well. But I mean, I know, you know, president of the LA City Council was an inner city kid that went through the program, the mayor of the city of San Fernando. I mean, and there are people who are with Goldman Sachs, a lot of the major investment firms who uh, went through the program. And what it's seen, people like yourselves and the other leaders have done a great, great job of not them, just themselves, but making these students, young students from the inner city as leaders. I mean, I, I go to the graduation and I watch 
a kid who's 18 or 17 years old get up and give a speech 10 times better than any speech I've given, I'm jealous. <laughs> so, um, in order to continue that tradition, what do you think the alumni of the Reardon programs can do to continue to fill the, fulfill the mission that we have already set forth? I think the fill, fulfill the mission is to do things, to care about everybody, to go in and if you see something that you can, that needs to be made happen, you have a relentless pursuit towards making it happen. You empower other people to make it happen. You have the courage to make decisions. If you're wrong, you're wrong. And another corollary I say, you admit your mistakes with confidence and you get on. Can you reflect back in your life and recall a defining moment, um, something that contributed to your growth and helped define you, um, who you are today? Well, I grew up during the Depression, born in 1930. We had poor people come from our house every day. Some of them wanted to pick weeds out of the grass so they can make a salad out of those weeds. And it just stayed with me all my life. And I saw uh, young people who, uh, particularly some African-American kids, I felt sorry for. And the interesting thing is, by my mid-twenties, I realized that's not the way to be. Don't feel sorry for somebody. Don't make them into a victim. Teach them to lead themselves. Teach them to be the leaders of the future. And I think that has gotten into the students in the Reardon program and the mentors and the inner city kids. So since we're on the, uh, the brink of celebrating our 25th anniversary, is there one final thought that you can leave us with? I can say to all of you, you've done a great leadership job, you and Alex and the others, and to the students at UCLA, the graduate students, you've done a great job. And you, the inner city kids, you've got a great future ahead of you, and I'm very, very proud to be part of it. Well, thank you very much, Mary Reardon, <laughs> and uh, professor here at UCLA <laughs> Anderson. <laughs> Uh, we Call me Professor time. Reardon. Oh, okay, Professor Reardon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was good.